ما يضل الفلا هادي له وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قوما سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار As we continue in the chapter in the shirk يستغيث بغير الله ويدعو غيره of the chapter of polytheism is to seek that relief times of adversity of, with, with other than Allah or to invoke other than Allah to better go to Adam. On this day, which is the day of which is the day, Wednesday, September the 5th, 706, 2018, which agrees on the Islamic calendar, which is which is the closing closing in on the end of the month of the Hijjah which in actuality is the 25th of the Hijjah, or the 24th of the Hijjah, 1439 after the Hijrah of Mustafa alayhi salatu As we continue in the chapter, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa, if you will look in your books as we finish the ayah in regards to this affair of what we were speaking about of al-istighatha and how it's from the ibadat that is exclusively for Allah to bring with ta'ala alone. As an istighatha, ya ma'ash al-ikhwa, is a type of dua, as we explain, right everyone? As we said, al-istighatha is a type of dua. It's dua al-makroob or dua al-muttar, the supplication or the invocation of the one who's in severe state of stress or adversity or something very tragic has happened and took place in his life where he's lost every type of help he can turn to to remove him out of the situation he's in, in which he's in dire need of his Lord, Ta'ala, to remove it from him. And we said this is what istighatha means. And you will find in the ayah that we completed, which is in Surah to Yunus, where Allah Ta'ala mentions this in the ayah that we completed. So that was the first delay and evidence that was used in the chapter. As you'll find Allah Ta'ala says in his book, as we know, وَإِن يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ if Allah wants to touch you with some harm, then no one can remove it except Him. And if He wants for you good, for no one can hold it back or reject or prevent His bounty, if Allah Ta'ala wants to give it to one. And He tests it, meaning He gives that harm or that bounty or that blessing, as all of it is a test from Allah. Allah tests one with what? Of what we know as sickness or what we deem to be things which are negative or things to be evil. But it's all a test as Allah gives to some of his servants. And also likewise, Allah mentions of some type of mercy or good. That if he also gives it to one, no one can hold it back or repel it. If he wants to give it to one. And there's no one that can hold back his bounty and his blessing if he wants to give it to a certain individual. And he tests by whom he wills of his, of his servants. And he's ghafur rahim. So Allah wa ta'ala, in this ayat that you'll find the great imam, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimallah, you'll find, ya ma'ish al ikhwa that he used this ayah, ayah as an evidence and reference point to the affair which he laid down in this chapter, which is what everyone? Al-istighatha. As we talked about before, 
Well, the I, I'm sorry, everyone. The I preceded it, as all of it is connected, it's all of it is Surah Yunus, all of it, both, of, both parts of the I. As Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, in the first part, do not invoke besides Allah what will not benefit you nor harm you. For if you used to do that, then verily, hence you will be from the Zalimeen, meaning the Mushrikeen. You'll be from the polytheists, as we talked about. And then if you look in the ayah after that, in the ayah, it says, and if Allah wants to touch you with some, some type of harm, then no one can remove it except him. So you find this ayah, Ma'ash al-Ikhwa, is all establishing the ibadat of Allah in which the, the affair of istighatha is only for him. How, ya Ma'ash al-Ikhwa, if you look in your books, and look at the ayah, if you look in, your, in everyone's book, we talked about how the ayah was speaking about dua. If you look in the context, so the ayah before it. Because all of it is connected. From ayah number 104 in Surah Yunus, all the way up to 106. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, do not invoke besides him what will not benefit you nor harm you. And if you do that, then verily, hence you will be from the, poly, from the polytheists. So we said, if you look in your books, <coughs> that we said the reason of why the great imam put this I in the chapter as a point of reference or the point of evidence, the reason for why he did this is because dua is a type of what? Is, excuse me, dua is worship. And we said istighatha is what everyone? A type of dua. So that's the reason why he used this ayah as a what? As an evidence and proof in this particular chapter. Because dua is general, but istighatha is specific. And for that reason, the fact that istighatha is a type of dua enters inside of what was mentioned in the ayah. Because Allah Ta'ala prohibited that invocation or supplication be for other than him. Which, like we said, istighatha is a type of dua. So every type of supplication enters in the meaning of what? Of dua. For dua is general, istighatha is specific, and the fact that Allah Ta'ala prohibited that every type of invocation be given to other than him, also likewise falls under the prohibition that istighatha is for other than him likewise because it's a type of dua, like we mentioned in the previous class. Also likewise, you'll find, he also mentioned in the chapter, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, that he said, and if Allah wants to touch you with some type of harm, no one can remove it except him. As we know, istighatha again. is a dua in the type where a person has lost all hope and help in an affair in which he is under severe stress. Or an affair that is life-threatening. Or an affair of something that's pertaining to some type of adversity or something that is very or weighing heavy on an individual. And he has nowhere to turn to except Allah. So in this ayah, what do you read? If Allah wants to touch you with some type of harm, so Allah tested you where he, tested you, uh, where he touched you with this type of harm. No one can remove it except him. So based upon this ayah, in regards to now, when a person wants a way out, which is istighatha, because he's facing some type of adversity. And this ayah is talking about if Allah touched you with some type of harm. To let you know that what, that which you're facing, or that which you're under of severe stress and remorse or regret, or anything as you're facing that is weighing heavy upon you, then it is from Allah. That Allah what? Has tested you with that. Even though evil is not ascribed to him as we mentioned. But he's the one that tested you with this. And as a reason, if he let this happen to you, then he's the one that can lift it from you and raise it from you. That's the reason why this ayah was also mentioned in, the, in, your, in everyone's book. So if one is under that severe stress and he's in, those, in that state where he's feeling very sad or regretful or depressed or uh, some type of sadness that is weighing heavy on him or even if it's life-threatening where the plane that he's in the air and he see that the, air, see that the airplane is about to crash or if he's in a car and he sees that the car is about to fall off the bridge. This is all these type of situations where a person would turn to a law which, is, which we're speaking about now, which is called istighatha. So istighatha here, ya ma'ash al-ikhwa, is during these times in which might, something could be life-threatening. Or those times in which it has, uh, it has afflicted a lot of people, especially in these days, where you'll find 
that they now want to commit suicide. As we know that this matter has become widespread amongst a lot of our people. People want to commit suicide. People are complaining from severe sadness and grief and depression where they feel they have no one or nothing to turn to or anything to turn to except Allah. So when a person raises his hands and asks Allah to relieve him, this is the type of dua which we're speaking about which is called istighatha. And notice that Allah Taala with the Allah mentions here in the, in the ayah what that if he test, tested you with this and he touched you with this type of harm, no one can remove it except him. And if he wants some good, no one can hold back his bounty or his blessing except him. And he tests by it, meaning of that harm and of that evil and of that good, he tests it from, of his servants or whom he wills. For verily, as we talked about, this type of dua, when a person is in this circumstance, he raises his hands in dua, or this type of dua, which is called stighatha, for verily, if his acts other than Allah, subhanahu, subhanahu jalla fil ula, ta'ala dhikru, for verily, if a person raises his hands and asks someone else for relief from what he's in or what he's facing in his life, of, those, of that adversity or that severe stress or those life-threatening situations, then he has nullified his Islam. His Islam is what? Is nullified if he dies in that state. Is from those unforgivable sins that Allah will not forgive for if the one is to die upon it. You'll find Ya Ma'ash al in the ayah, as Allah Taala mentions and says, in so many different ayat, as we don't have time to read all of them. As Allah Taala in so many numerous ayat talks about if a person is under these severe circumstances, to seek that relief only from him exclusively. From those ayat, for example, we know that Allah Taala mentions in his book, and we can use the other ayat. You'll find the other ayat that I mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, mentions. وَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُعَذَّبِينَ Do not invoke with, along with Allah another deity. Hence you will be from those who are punished. In the, in the hereafter. How is this ayah when you mention dua relative to what we're speaking about now, everyone? Keep in mind, what did we say? Anytime you hear dua is only for Allah, then what falls into it? What falls into it? Istighatha. So any ayah that's speaking about dua being other than for him, or, or prohibiting dua for other than Allah, then automatically this type of ibadah, istighatha, falls into it. Because it's a, type of, it's a type of dua. And also the other ayat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book, so many different ayat, I don't have time to just mention all of them, but it will suffice by what we just mentioned, because we've got to speak about the other evidences and proofs. طيب. We also mentioned last lesson, you know, alhamdulillah, I want to keep going. Also, these ayat, if you notice, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa, in all of these ayat, the ayah before and the ayah that we just mentioned here, as we constantly mention on every occasion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always establishes Tawheed al Rububiyyah, the monotheism of His Lordship, in order to establish that He is the one that deserves to be worshipped alone. We said Tawheed al Rububiyyah. The monotheism of Allah's lordship means what everyone, as we mentioned? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions. If you notice or look in your books, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, again, numerous affairs as pertaining to, to what he does. For example, if you look in your book, your book, what does it say? Allah says, do not invoke besides Allah. Right, everyone? As we know, that's Tawheed al-Uluhi or Tawheed al-Ibadah. That's unification of Allah and his worship. So Allah establishes worship in saying that it's not, no one should uh, invoke or raise his hands or establish any type of worship except for him. What's the reason? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Tawheed al rububiyyah Unification of Allah or him being singled out by his actions. What are the actions? Here I mentioned in the ayah. What does it say? Do not invoke besides Allah what does not benefit you nor harm you. For verily, if you do that, hence you will be from the mushrikeen. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that what? Can harm you, uh, uh, can touch you with some type of harm, or allow you to attain some type of benefit. All of that is from which category, Tawheed, everyone? 
Which category of Tawheed is that? Al-Rububiyyah. You flip the page and read the other ayah. What does it say? If Allah will touch you or touch you with some type of harm, which category of Tawheed is that? If Allah touch you or tested you or touch you with some type of harm, which category of Tawheed is that? Rububi again. No one can remove it except him. What is that again? Rububiyyah. And if he wants for you good, which category of Tawheed is that? Rububiyyah. No one can reject it or no one can hold back his bounty or his blessing. Just keep, mes- keep listening. He tests by it whom he wills. Uh, well he fl- but technically it says he afflicts. But it means test. He tests by it, meaning those affairs of good and evil, or whom he wills. Which, tawheed, which, which category is this? I'll say it again. Rububiya. He tests by it of whom he wills. Of whom he wills. He wills. Which category of Tawheed? Rububiya. He is Ghafur Rahim. Taib. All these affairs of Tawheed or Rububiya was mentioned in this ayah. All for it to establish and point out the most important of all affairs of why the human being was created. Why he was in, in this existence in the first place, which established the worship of him alone. So you find that Rububiyyah was mentioned again in these ayat in order to establish that he, Tabarakah wa Ta'ala, is the one that deserves the, the ibadah or the worship of him alone, subhanahu jalla fil ula. As we mentioned, it said, Ya Ma'ash al as we said. All these ayat, you'll find the same pattern. Allah Tabarakah wa Ta'ala mentions Tawheed al Rububiyyah, given numerous examples of it in order to establish that he is the one that deserves to be worshipped, which is Tawheed al ibadah or Tawheed al uluhiyah or you could call it Tawheed al-Ilahiyya, or you could call it, call it, as Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in so many of his books, Tawheed al-Talab al-Qasd. All of it is the same. Tayyip. So Allah Ta'ala mentions in his book that he is the one that allows for a person to be under extreme circumstances where he, fee- where he feels severe remor- remorse and regret and sadness and grief. These things are from Allah, in which he allows to happen to his servants, to test them, to see what they will do, even though he knows, to see how they will react, to see how they will conduct, to see if they will remain patient and steadfast upon his obedience and his uprightness during these times, which are trying times, which are very severe and may weigh heavy upon the individual. And Allah noticed Allah said that this is from him, that he is the one that tests his, his ibad or his servants with him. In order to establish that if he's the one that allowed it to happen to you, then he's the one that only can what? Remove it. And which is to what? To let everyone know that he is the one that deserves ultimately all the worship, not no one else except him. Subhanahu jalla fil ula. Taib. The next ayah, if you look in your book, Allah Ta'ala goes on to mention in his book, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقُ وَعْبُدُوهُ وَأَشْكُرُوا لَهُ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Verily indeed those who you work in, excuse me, verily those who you worship besides Allah, they do not own or possess or have any ownership of any provisions for you. Seek with Allah ta'ala, the provisions and sustenance. Worship Him alone and direct your thanks to him, likewise, alone. And to him you finally will return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the next ayah, which is the great Imam al-Shaykh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Imam al-Mujaddid, rahimahullah, rahmatu wasi'u jazahullahu, anna wa anna al-Muslimi khayl al-jazah, wa a'zama Allahu ajrahu, wa a'zama, wa rafa'a sha'nahu wa makanatuhu. You'll find Ya Ma'ash al ikhwan that the great Imam, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah, al Imam al Mujaddid, Rahimahullah, wa Jazahullahu anna wa anna muslimin, Khailu Jaza, wa Da'afullahu fi Mathubate, wa A'adamullahu Ajra, that you'll find that he put in another, in this chapter, another ayah, to lay down that istighatha is only for him. You'll find that these chapters are all 
in order to establish the ibadah of Allah because the majority of the Muslims in the Muslim world have turned away from the ibadah of Allah alone. And they have directed their worship to other than him in which the shayateen has decorated for their followers. I mean the followers of Sufiya and also their mashayikh so-called. And you'll find that the, from the affairs of the talbisat or the deception of Iblis is what the people of Sufiya are upon. In which you'll find that the shayateen came to them in their dreams and decorated certain affairs of shirk for them which we'll speak about. Especially in the book in which Ibn al-Jawzi mentioned which is called Talbis Iblis. And he brings different examples of how Iblis comes with different types of scenarios and different types of tricks and certain images and even makes certain sounds to make the people think there's something uh, above or something if you want to say. Something that is uh, what we consider to be out of the ordinary in which, you, which as a result of it someone would think there was something special about the person who's dead. Meaning, as we'll talk about inshallah. Don't worry, I'm going to speak about it. Like for example, some of the worshippers of the grave will come to the grave of a one who's righteous and they'll make dua to them. And shaitan will go in the grave and he will allow certain sounds to take place in the grave. Whereas now the follower becomes what? Fooled and beguiled by what he heard, which as a result of it he starts invoking other than Allah. Not realizing that the shaitan had did this in order for him to fall into the most evilest, most evil, excuse me, the most evil and the most greatest of all oppression, which is polytheism. But he climbed in the grave in order to what? Make a sound. So a person thinks that he's what? Inv that he's invo uh, what he's invoking or what he's doing is actually the truth. So the shaitan will cause sounds and even to the point where the shaitan will stand up in the grave, in the image of that dead person, in order to deceive those people, especially who, who are practicing this type of what? Misguidance, to make them go and fall into more what? Misguidance. And also to get them to fall into polytheism. Come in the image of the dead person or the person who's righteous and deceive them and fool them. That all this is from the what? The plots of shaitan, especially what Ibn al Jawzi mentioned in his book called Talbis Iblis. We'll find there's a stories that he mentioned a lot of different scenarios and the different events that occurred, especially from those who are upon Sufiya, to trick them in order for them to what? Fall into misguidance, especially polytheism and the worshiping of other than Allah. In which I don't have time to mention the stories. But at any rate, you, oh, it's already. Because someone, uh, where's, where's Amir? He didn't, he left? Amir? I think it's called the call. Did it come in? I think it's in. Or oh, it comes at 7 30. Oh, it's almost 7 It's about another minute. Maybe only one minute. But like I said, yeah, but actually, I don't think Amir said he's going to. That, that's why he's two Amirs. It's, it's in? 7 29? Yes, time now. It's time now. But anyway, you'll find that uh, Shaitan, in which you'll find Ibn Jawzi entitled his book called Tal Talbis Iblis. And he brings an, an numerous scenarios and occasions in which he establishes that the Shaitan comes in the form of these dreams, especially to the people of Sufiya, and decorates for them their actions. Allah Akbar Allah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Shit on that. Remind me to make wudu. Remind me to make wudu. Right. Alhamdulillah. 
طيب as we said in the next ayah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the book إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونَ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقُ وَاعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجِعُونَ طيب indeed those who you invoke besides Allah or excuse me worship besides Allah they don't own for you or have any ownership for you, your provisions. Notice Allah Ta'ala mentioned in this book, if you go back again, I think we can complete it here. This ayah is a Surah Al-Ankabut, ayah number 17, all the way up to ayah number, ayah number 16, all the way up to, up to what? 18. But only, they mention only one part. If you go back to 16 in Surah Al-Ankabut, the great Imam only mentioned one part of the ayah. In Surah Al-Ankabut, which is the ayah, which is partially, he's a part of one ayah, which is in ayah number 17. In Surah Al-Ankabut. But if you read the whole ayah in, 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 as a whole, it, it reads as such. Where Ibrahim إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أُعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَاتَّقُوا ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ The ayah reads as, as this, as such, as, as, as the father that we're going to read right now. The Surah Al-Ankabut, ayah number 16. With Ibrahim, hence when he said to his people, Worship Allah and fear him alone. That is better for you if you only but knew. Then, is, then Ibrahim said, إِنَّمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Verily you worship besides Allah Othan Those idols Which are what? And he said that the meaning of Othan is what everyone? The meaning of Othan is what? That which is in a state in a, Excuse me That which is put in an image Or other than an image Whether an image of a human being Or an animal Or other than that It could be a rock It could be a tree It could be the sun It could be the moon It could be the stars all those are considered othan. In contrast to sanam or asnam, or sanam is only what was put in the image of a human being or an animal. That's called a sanam. But othan is more what? General. Othan could be the sun, the moon, the stars, a human being, a in, in the, that which was put in an image or other than an image, whatever. So it says in the ayah, verily, this is upon what Ibrahim mentioned. Verily you worship besides Allah, Othan. And you also fabricate a lie. The greatest of lies, there's no lie, lie greater than a lie of polytheism. That's the greatest of all lies. There's no fabrication or lie that is greater, greater than polytheism. Of lying upon Allah, of, of it being another deity that deserves to be worshipped, either along with Allah or independ independently being worshipped besides Allah. So then it goes on the ayat to say, Verily what you worship besides Allah does not own anything or have any type of ownership of your provisions. Seek your provisions with, your, with, your, with, seek with Allah your provisions and worship Him alone and, be, and also make you sincere. Thanks to only Him. And to Him you will, you will finally return. So if you notice and you read in the ayah, Ya Ma'ashal Ikhul, you'll find that this was a mention upon the tongue of Ibrahim. And notice that Ibrahim, that he mentioned the affair of what? He says, when Ibrahim, and he hints that he said to his people, worship Allah and fear him. Taib. Ibrahim mentioned that the one should, people should direct, or his people at his time, direct the worship only to Allah. Then he follows it up with the reason. Where he says, 
Again, verily indeed, which you worship besides Allah, does not own any of what? Provisions. So what was Ibrahim doing in order to establish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to be worshipped alone? What is he mentioning here in this ayah, everyone? What is he mentioning? Which, where's Tawheed al be in the ayah? Huh? Where? Where? It's in your book. It's right there. No, they do not own any? What, what category of Tawheed is that? Exactly. I'm asking you guys to pick it out. What category of Tawheed is that? Rububiyya. Why? So Ibrahim, when he established when he, a proof against his people, he also u- utilized what? What, everyone? Rububiyya. So Ibrahim utilized Tawheed or Rububiyya min bab al-ilzam in order to bind upon the, his people. What, everyone? What, everyone? Uluhiyya, ibadah. So you find that's exactly what Ibrahim is doing in the ayahs. And the part, like you said, the ayah was partially mentioned in your books. It wasn't fully mentioned. So that's the reason why we, we mentioned the full ayah to get a, a little bit more what? Clarity. And attain a bit more benefit. But you know, as the great Imam, Hafiz al Rahimallah, mentioned it in order to keep the book or, or a little bit more concise and, and summarized. But we mentioned in the whole ayah here, so it can attain a little bit more benefit and more, a, little bit more, a little bit more insight. So it says here in the ayah, Verily you worship besides Allah, Verily that which you worship besides Allah does not own any provisions. So Ibrahim was establishing the tawheed, a rububi of lordship, which is the actions of Allah. And from his actions is that Allah ta'ala owns everything in its existence. Everything. Without any exception. That he is the one that singled out with mulk. Of him owning and having total, full domination of everything in his existence. And everything is under his worship, uh, under his ownership. Everything in his, in his existence is under his ownership. And not only that, Allah Ta'ala add to his ownership provisions. So he, you will find that the, the great a Prophet, alayhi, meaning Ibrahim, alayhi wa ala nabiyina, afdul as-salati wa tamma taslim utilized tawheed al-rububiyya, to establish upon his people what? Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Which is the, the Tawheed of Ibadah, of worship. The problem is, like we said, Ya Ma'ish al what, what if you'll find that this was an affair of all the prophets, that they utilized Tawheed al-Rububiyyah to establish upon the people Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. What about the people who make Shirk al rububiyyah and Uluhiyyah together? To let you know that's more Aqbah wa Ashna' That's more ugly and more horrific and more Humiliating and more lowly than the polytheists during the time of the Prophet ﷺ as far as even in their belief system was in that corrupt. Even though it was corrupt, but it wasn't to that extent. So what do, we, what do, we, what do you do in order to establish the provi- or the uh, hujja or the argument against one who's making shirk in both categories? Meaning to let you know that it's going to be even more difficult and more what? And more hard in order to establish what is the haqqa, what is to be true, and what also what to rectify that individual. For that person that falls into both categories of shirk, such as the rawafid, and even the sufiyah, was to let you know how far a lot of the Muslims have what? Reached the level of being far away from what? The message of Muhammad sallallahu wa And if this is the case with a lot of Muslims and that they carry this type of belief, why would that not be the first thing you work on? But now you want to direct the people towards politics, not rectifying something that not even the mushrikeen or the polytheists of the first didn't even have this belief. If that was something the Prophet ﷺ didn't even have to deal with that with the mushrikeen. Because when he came to the mushrikeen during his time, all he had to do was what? Establish the proofs and evidences from the aspect of Tawheed al rububiyyah because they were purified in that belief. The problem was getting them to what? Unify Allah in his worship, even though they believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that totally had full domination of everything in this existence. That's why Allah himself and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, utilized this in order to establish the proof 
that he was the one that deserves to be worshipped. But what about now Muslims who say that they're Muslim and they've been Muslims for years. I've been Muslim for 50, 60 years. You can't tell me. This is what I'm doing is correct. Then you'll find that, like we said, they're falling into something that was worse than the mushikin at first. And then you'll find out only top, on top of that, you'll find that the Muslims that carry this type of ideologies, you'll find that there are callers that have been overseas for a long time and say, ah, we don't really have to busy us. It's not that important. Yeah, if they fell into something, some of the Muslims, and a lot of the Muslims these days are falling to affairs that was worse than the mushikin at the first. Why wouldn't you start on this first? Is it clear what I'm saying? Why wouldn't that be your initial? Affair which you start and make that your most utmost of principles that you start with purifying the people with. Because they fell into something that was worse than the mushikin during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu So even you find it, even Ibrahim, to let you know that his people during his time was purified in the aspect of what? A rububiyya. But they fell into misguidance in the aspect of what? Of worship. And then he utilized Tawheed or rububiyya to establish the arguments against them in order to bind upon them the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So you'll find here, Ma'ash al-Ikhwa, that it goes on to say in the ayah. Verily, that which you worship besides Allah don't own any provisions. So provisions, as we also know, is what everyone, is from the affairs in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls the provisions. Is, am I right or wrong? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives provisions, he, gives, he opens the provisions up for certain people, makes them rich, and Allah to be with the Allah strickens, or he gives less to certain individuals. All of that is out of his infinite wisdom. And all of it is from his actions. And how one increases his provisions is by the worship of Allah. You'll find there's a sirra, a, a sirr. In this ayah, if you look in, the book, in your books, it says... Seek with Allah provisions. Then what follows right after what everyone? Worship him. You'll find that from the benefits that extracted from the, from the ayah, if one wants to increase his provisions, then he should worship Allah increasing his ibadah. If you look in your books again, it says they do not own any provisions. What does it say? Seek with Allah sustenance. What does it say after it? Worship him, which is to let you know what? That ibadah is a reason for what? For one's sustenance to be increased or to be augmented. To be increased and augmented if he wants his provisions to be increased, devote towards his, your word to worship of Allah to pray with the Allah alone. If you want your provisions increased. So you'll find that there's a what? That's from the benefits that's extracted from the ayah. If one wants his provisions to be increased, increase in your worship. As I said in the khutbah, in khutbah al-Eid, what did I say to khutbahs? And I think I mentioned this hadith. Where it says that Allah Ta'ala mentions it in the hadith al-Qudsi, and it's also been authenticated by the great Imam al-Albani. He says, Ya ibadi, or Ya bin Adam, tafarragh li'ibadati, tafarragh li'ibadati, tafarragh li'ibadati, سَدَّدْتُ فَقْرَكْ وَقَضَيْتُ حَاجَتَكْ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ سَفَمَا سَدَّدْتُ فَقْرَكْ He said, وَمَا قَضَيْتُ حَاجَتَكْ The meaning of the hadith is, O oh, Ibn Adam, devote to my worship. He says, I will take care and remove your poverty. And I will also what? I'm increasing your provisions. The poverty ultimately is the poverty of the heart. The, pov the poverty of the heart. Meaning Allah will give you enrichment of your heart no matter what circumstance or what type of level in society you're in. A lot of people think it's, a bit, it's, it's monetarily being in the hand or that Allah will increase it. No. What could be enrichment could be enrichment of the heart, which is the most greatest of enrichment. It's that Allah to be with the Allah make you what? Content of what you have. No matter what status of society you're in. How many people that we know, like we said, are rich and they still they feel like they're the most, most severest of impoverished people and the most of, and from the people who are from the indigent, even though they're rich and they have a lot of money, but they still what? Poor inside of their what? It's hard of the heart. So enrichment doesn't start with just having provisions with money. 
It starts with enrichment of the what? Of the qalb, of the heart first. So that type of enrichment is the greatest of all. Enrichment that Allah Taala only gives to his slaves. And as a reason for that is to worship him alone. Which you'll find, like we said, is mentioned in the ayah. That he says, seek with Allah provisions. Worship him and what? And be thankful to him. So not only worship of Allah increases one's provisions and augmented, also likewise, thanking him and directing that thanks to him alone. By the tongue and by the what? By the tongue and by the belief of the heart and also by the actions which are righteous in which you utilize that ni'mah, that bounty that Allah has bestowed upon you. By three ways, as we know. By what? Number one, huh? By the tongue, by professing it and saying it and not and acknowledging it with what everyone? With the tongue. And with, with the heart. And, and by the actions and the limbs. For one that does that, that's also be a reason for his provisions being increased. And if Allah sees, of course we know, for his slaves, if he needs more provisions, then by all means he will give him more monetary and more what? Provisions for him, if that's an affair in which Allah Taala gives to him in that way. But the most ultimate of greatest of provisions is the enrichment of the heart. Then, of taking care of the necessities and the affairs of the ibad, also comes along with it, no doubt. So it's not just restricted to enrichment of the heart, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can also open up for the ibad, that which is tangible from money and what we also know of what is Allah gives to the ibad of his servants of money and monetary assistance in order to take care of his needs. For those affairs, if one wants it and he wants it to be increased, then let him increase in his ibadah and an increase in his obedience and also his thanks in which we know that the arkan or the pillars of, of shukr, of thanks is by what? By three, as we know. By the heart, by the tongue, and also likewise by what, everyone? Huh? By the actions. Which one subjects that ni'mah of any ni'mah that you have. No matter if it's a car or a house or eyes or hearing or tasting or smelling or feet. No matter what it is. By utilizing it in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will come as a result of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more and increasing you. And using it in opposite or contrast of his obedience could be, could be a reason of removal of that particular bounty and blessing. As we know, right everyone? Type. So it says in the ayah, and then we have to stop. I would like to go after class. If one wants, we could, we could continue after class. But we got to stop because of the qamata. Maybe we can continue after class, inshallah. We'll continue for another 20 minutes after class because we got to stop and pray. Thought we'll stop and pray. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik shanu la ilahe la antistafrika wa tubi.